All right, I have great news, you guys. This is the lecture where you get to learn my all-time favorite R package. Well, I suppose my favorite is the one I wrote, but my second favorite now, R package. What we're gonna learn about in this lecture is going to be special data types. And really what I mean by that is they're not that special, they behave like any other data, but often you have to do certain tasks to them to make them more usable. Let me show you what I mean. So first of all, I want you to create a new R, R Markdown file, and I want you to load in that data set College is Clean. I've posted it for you where you can find it. This is also just the pre-cleaned version of the data set that I asked you to clean in your practice activity last week. So you're welcome to use that old Markdown file if you want to. Now the first thing I want to talk about is factors. We talked last week about how factors are different from strings. They're kind of strings with this added component where we say there's only a few categories that these factors can come in. And I showed you some ways that factors behave weirdly. And I imagine you'll come across a situation where you would like to redefine the categories or reorganize the categories. So some common tasks that you want to do with factors. Well, quite often you want to turn a character variable or even a numeric variable into a factor. Something that you know should be categories, but it isn't being understood that way in R. Zip codes is a great example of this. Sometimes you want to define your own factor by binning, it's called a numeric variable. So you might say something like, well, you've got houses and you've got the square footage of those houses, but really you'd like to categorize them as small, medium, or large. And you'll also often want to either rename or reorder or even just redefine the categories, which we call levels, of that factor. We're going to be using the package 4cats, which is a very clever package name. It stands for 4 categoricals, since it's 4 categorical data, but it's also got some cats in the hex sticker. And this package gives some really nice shortcuts that help you fix and manipulate categorical variables. And this one also loads and installs with the tidyverse, so you don't have to do anything right now to have access to these functions. So let's say you just have an ordinary character vector and you'd like to turn it into a factor. Here I've got my character vector with apple, dog, banana, cat, banana, queen, Elizabeth, and dog. And if we look at that, it's clearly a string vector. Now if I use this function factor, now I look at x, and x has been transformed into a factor. So kind of on the surface to a human, it's exactly the same. Those values are still apple, dog, banana, cat, banana, queen, Elizabeth, dog. They are still just words, but we have this additional thing that is the levels. So we can see here R is letting us know. Here are the possible categories that we will allow for this factor. You may also notice that in the first printout, there's quotes around the words, and in the second printout, there's not. That's just a little quirk that R uses to let you know, hey, here comes a string, versus these are categories. That doesn't really change inherently the way the data is stored. It's just a difference in how R prints a string versus a factor. But let's suppose you had this factor, this character vector, and really what you meant is you wanted this to be in categories, so you wanted some fruits and some pets. We can use this function factor recode, fct underscore recode, and we can say I want the fruit factor to be include that string apples, and I also want the fruit factor to include that string bananas, and I'd like the pet factor to include dog and cat. And we can see here that if I run this through on x and save the results, then that output still looks like a factor, but now all of those strings here, they've been converted to a different word, to the word that we said we wanted to be the category. And then we only have these levels left, the two that we just defined, fruit and pet. And because we didn't tell it what to do with Queen Elizabeth, she is neither a fruit nor a pet, I hope there's no British people watching this, here she is, she is still her own factor, and that particular value in your vector did not get altered. So this is very handy, quite often you'll just by hand decide which words belong to which category and go from there. Now for that binning situation, there's a few ways to do this and none of them is wrong. My favorite is what's called case when. It's kind of a shortcut for creating categorical variables based on what's going on in other variables. So here I'm back with my penguins da uh, data set and let's be really careful with these pipes and these functions. I'm piping penguins into mutate. How do I want to mutate the dataset penguins? Well, I'd like to make a new variable called body mass. What do I want to be stored in that variable body mass? Well, 
what I'd like to do is store different values based on the values of that original variable, body mass g, body mass in grams. So I've said here, when that original variable is under 4,050 grams, I would like to label that penguin as small. And when my body mass is more than 4,050, but still under 5,000, I'd like to label that penguin as medium. And for anything else, this true here is a shortcut that says anything that didn't fit those earlier categories, I'd like to label it large, or I've decided to go with chonker, because those are some pretty big penguins. So I've taken the results of that mutate step and piped them into select so you can just see the two variables that are relevant here. And we can see here, here's a small penguin because their original body mass was under 4,050. Now notice one of these has been labeled as large or as chonker, even though we didn't actually know the body mass. So you do have to be a little careful with case when, because if you use this true trick, if you use this trick that says everything else, label it this way, everything else might include missing data or it might include data that's been entered wrong. And so you might get into a little bit of trouble there. But otherwise, this is a great shortcut. We have successfully taken our numeric variable, body mass g, and used it to create a categorical variable just called body mass that had these three categories. So I want you with your college's clean data set, go ahead and copy paste or copy with your fingers this code and tell me what it did. In fact, it's good to look at this code and try to run it in your head and figure out what happened before you run it on the screen. I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, hopefully you tried this out yourself. Let's look at the results. Oops. Okay, hopefully you tried this out yourself, and what you saw was that we have now created a new variable called type, and it has the possible categories of public or private, depending on whether that control variable, which is not a very helpful variable name, was one or two. If you looked at the documentation, you would have seen that one corresponds to public and two corresponds to private. Okay. So with the three packages you're learning today, starting with four cats, we are not going to practice every single function. I've just shown you how two of them work, and these are kind of representative of the whole package. But you're going to need to learn to come across new packages and new functions and learn what's going on with them yourself. Now remember the important things with a function. You want to ask yourself what data type and what object structure does it take as input, and what data type and object structure does it give as output. That is the key to understanding each function. They really are each just a black box. You give the computer some stuff, and it gives you something back. So I want you to click on this link, or follow this link, to find the 4CATS cheat sheet. These cheat sheets are little documents that people make for their packages when they write them that help you kind of shortcut reference the names of functions. I find them very useful for myself when I say, I know there's a function that does this, but I forgot what it's called. I want you to try to use this uh, cheat sheet information, and any other information on the internet is fine too, to try to find the differences between these slightly similar functions. So we have factor relevel and factor recode. What's the difference between releveling versus recoding? We have factor collapse and factor lump. Those are both two uh, words that kind of evoke this collapsing and lumping together. What is the difference between those? And then there is factor reorder and factor in order. What is the difference between those? And my advice here is that you invent a couple of factors, that you make some more, you can use my cat dog Queen Elizabeth if you want, and just feed them to these functions and see what comes out. It's much easier to figure out how stuff works by trying and exploring than necessarily by reading documentation. So I'll give you a moment to work on that. 